Today I'm going to show you how to use a UHF RFID system with an Allen Bradley PLC in Studio 5000. This is my basic setup. It takes three components. The first is the UHF read head. See that here on the left. This uses a standard M12 shielded extension cable to our second component, which is the Ethernet controller. This could be a one, two, or four channel unit, and it communicates Ethernet IP back to the Allen Bradley PLC, which you can see here, which is on the right side, which is the Compact Logix. And you can see that there's a couple of extra Ethernet ports on the Allen Bradley PLC and the controller that you can use at Daisy Chain, additional RFID controllers in a linear topology. Don't forget the 24 volt supply. You don't have to connect anything additional to the UHF head because that is connected or powered directly from the RFID controller. Okay, let's go through the UHF model number selection. There's really six different model numbers to choose from, and you can choose from the F190, which is the 2 meter model, or the 6 meter F192, and then make sure that you buy the right read head for the correct country that you're gonna, you're gonna install it in. You don't wanna buy it for where you're gonna make it, but make sure you're gonna install. Because I am going to install and use the read head in the USA, I'll pick one of these two models. The F190 with the, with the suffix FR2-02. This will be good for USA, Canada, Mexico, and so on. There's three different controller selections that you can make. You can do the one and two channel Ident Control Compact, which is Ethernet IP, or you can do the four channel controller, which you can see at the bottom. Besides a number of heads, the four channel also has the graphical display and keypad, which could be useful, makes it really easy to program the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway, or the one and two channel, which could use the rotary switches on the back to configure the controller, Ethernet parameters. So I selected the four channel version, because then I can use one, two, or all four heads. It doesn't matter. And third selection here is that PLC, and you can use anything that uses an Allen Bradley or Studio 5000 or RS Logix 5000, Compact Logix, Control Logix, Soft Logix. Also, you can use anything above version 16 when you're talking about the PLC programming, but version 20 and above is kind of nice because you can use the EDS file, which gives you a kind of EDS add on profile. So I chose the Compact Logix. I have the L24 ER QB1B model. Okay, the next thing to do, download the EDS file from the website at pepperl-fuchs.com and just type the model in ICKP B17 AIDA1. What you'll see pop up is the model number and picture on the left. Click on it and go to the software tab. Once you do that, you'll see that the Ethernet IP, EDS, and ICON file are there. You can go ahead and save and download them. Then all you have to do is install the EDS file. You can do this really one of two ways. You can use the hardware installation tool uh, in e RS Links folder, in the tools folder, or in the later versions of Studio 5000, you got the tools menu and you got the EDS hardware installation tool there. It's the same program, just accessed from two different places. Once that's done and installed, let's go ahead and add our Ethernet controller to our project. So let's go. Okay, right click on Ethernet and choose New Module. I'm going to search for Pepperell and Fuchs, choose my four channel controller, which I've added because of the EDS file. I'm going to name it RFID1, put my IP address in there. And the next thing I'm going to do is change my I.O. mapping, which we're going to discuss in a little bit. I'm going to map 60 bytes for each of four heads, change the format to double integer. That'll be perfect for my add on instructions later. And I'm going to choose OK, choose Yes, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Let's go in a little more detail on the connection modes. I kind of went through that quickly. So there are basically eight different assembly instances or connections that you can make. And based on which controller that you're using, I would like to make a, a suggestion on which one to choose. Okay, so. You can see I have two banks there, the separated mode version, which is great for the multi-head controllers, gives you the maximum speed, especially if you have a 
bunch of heads. And then mixed mode controller or connection options. I typically like to use them for one head controllers or if I really want to be efficient on my memory allocation. So let's go a little further and say, well, how much data? Let's say I, I like the, the separated mode because I can map all four heads simultaneously, but how do I know how much data I need to map? Well, let's go through the four options here, 8, 12, 32, and 60 bytes. In the UHF data stream, you're going to have a number of bytes that you want to be aware of. Okay, Number one, you got a couple of bytes for the command. You have a status indication to see whether the, the command was executed correctly or not. A counter, which just counts up for every executed command. Now you have a length of your protocol control word and your EPC. Remember, every UHF tag has an EPC code on it, so it's supplied to you with every single response, even if you're just looking for user data. And now you actually have the EPC data itself. Lastly, you've got the user data, and that's the user data length, the user data, and let's see what happens when I chop the stream off at 8 bytes. Okay, so you can see that if I chopped it at 8 bytes, I'm only going to get the protocol control word. That's not really that useful because you, you're missing the EPC user and everything. So I wouldn't use that one. Okay, so next, let's say you mapped only 12 bytes for each read head. It's a little better, but you only get four bytes of the EPC code. And if I'm assuming that every tag has a 96-bit EPC, you can see that you're not going to get a lot of uniqueness from each tag. Okay, so I wouldn't do this, this one, unless you reprogram every EPC code to be only four bytes long. All right, thirdly, you can map 32 bytes. I think this is a lot better. I get my full EPC code, and I get a little bit of user data. So that's very good. And then lastly would be, if you map 60 bytes, I can't even show you the whole thing here because my array is kind of ran out, but you're going to get a lot more user data. So if you want a lot of data, just be safe and map 60 bytes for each read head. So in my suggestion for the one head controllers, I would map and use the mixed mode assemblies and map 102.152 assembly at 32 bytes which would give you a 10 bytes of user data. If you need more, map 60 bytes at assembly 103.153 to get up to 34 bytes of user data. If you've got the 2 or the 4 channel unit, I would map all 4 heads. Okay, Even though the 2 channel unit doesn't even have uh, heads 3 and 4, it doesn't matter. Just leave them blank. You can always use that for expansion later in case you upgrade to a 4 channel. So again, if you map the the assembly 106156, you'll map 32 bytes times 4 for each of the heads, and you'll get 10 bytes of user data for each one. Or do assembly 107157, which is kind of my go-to assembly instance for 60 bytes per head times 4 heads. And let's see what happens. The best thing I like to do is take my configuration, let's say I'm happy with the connection that I made, I'm just downloaded into the PLC. I haven't done any PLC programming or anything like that. Download it to the PLC and make sure my connection is proper. Number one, now it's in run mode. Number two, let's check that the assembly that I chose is correct. Maybe I made a mistake or something or exited or didn't hit OK. So you can see I'm mapping 60 bytes per head times four heads. Assembly 107157. I check again under my Ethernet ethernet device under the controller organizer. I want to make sure that dreaded yellow triangle isn't there. It's not. And just as a double check, if I double click on it, you can see that my status has, says running. So I'm good to go. So that's all we're going to do today. This is just the configuration. The next video we're going to do will be the programming in the PLC. Talk to you later.